Hey, hey, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. And today's episode is going to be a fairly short one because it is a very specific point that I want to leave you with that I want you to really spend some time thinking about. Um, you may have seen from the title of this episode, what we're going to be talking about today is the relationship of having a full life to having a full schedule. And I don't remember where exactly this, this nugget dropped into. I've been mulling on it for quite some time. But I feel like the world in which we live in, and also based on you know, numerous conversations I have with the hundreds of women inside of my top program, is this need or this pressure that we put on ourselves internally, and we also allow in externally to fill up our calendar. And this manifests ultimately in us being constantly overbooked, overscheduled, and overexhausted. And then we take a step back. And if we're really honest with ourselves and we realize maybe we're not, this is not like a joy filled existence anymore. It is constantly in motion from one half to, to another. And we wonder why, because we're like, well, I, you know, I have a full calendar. Why do I not feel full and complete on the inside? So if this is resonating with you, I want to share with you today um, kind of an exercise that you can go through to help you get that more in alignment. Because I know for myself, um, there is a certain point at which if my schedule or my calendar gets any more full it is diminishing returns. But on the flip side, there are things that bring me pleasure, that bring me joy, that do fill me up, that I want to make sure take a priority on my calendar. Now, what level of a quote full schedule you need to maintain in your life to feel like you have a full life is going to be completely unique for you, right? And, and that's going to be based on your personality type. There are some people that, you know, thrive with lots of, you know, if you want to just nuts and bolts of it, more extroverted type where it really um, fills them up to have a lot of external activities versus other people who that will lead to overwhelm and then, you know, kind of people anywhere in between that. So here's what I want you to do. First of all, without looking at your calendar, your schedule or whatever, take some time when you are well rested, quiet and relaxed and have a conversation with yourself focused on understanding at the end of each day, how do you tend to go to bed feeling? Do you go to bed feeling accomplished, content, satisfied? Or do you go to bed just thankful that the day is over and maybe even a little worried about the next day? Um, I have I have lived on both sides of this, um, and I I see time and time again with women that I meet, a vast majority of them are living today and more of the going to bed exhausted, and like here we go again tomorrow. What we want to do is shift the pendulum to the other side where the vast majority of our days are ending where we are going to bed feeling accomplished, content, and satisfied. So if you are not in that place today, then it is time for you to go look at your calendar. And what we want to do is just analyze the last week. That's it. So whether you're using a Google calendar, a paper, paper planner, maybe you even need to go look in a couple places because what we want to do is we want to go back and look at how did you spend your time all of the previous week? And as you're analyzing that, we just want to label everything on there as a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Thumbs up meaning what were the things on your calendar that lit you up? That when you saw that appointment, you're like, yes, or that task that you did that made you feel so great versus 
what were the things on your calendar that that was a, oh my God, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Um, the thing that maybe sucked the life out of you, the thing that you avoided doing, but you know felt like you should have done. And that's all we're going to do. We're not going to create a, a ranking scale, just a thumbs up and a thumbs down. The next step is once you've done that for the last week is, is to take an honest assessment at what percentage of your time was spent in thumbs up and what percentage of your time was spent in thumbs down. Now you don't have to get, you know, add up every minute and, and do the actual mathematical equation for the percentages. Um, you should be able to visually start to see this. So if you were to see on Monday, wow, look at that. I spent my entire morning and a couple hours in the afternoon doing things that were a thumb down. That means that, you know, you probably had 60% of your day in the things that do not fill you up versus maybe you look at a day and you're like, oh my gosh, I did five things that day. And all of like, I went to bed that night feeling amazing. Once you've gotten that kind of analysis of the time, now we need to take the final step, which is looking at the things that we put a thumbs down on and start having a heart to heart conversation with ourselves of why are they on my calendar? And more importantly, are there things that I can do to get them off? Meaning, is it something I just need to start saying no to? Is it something I got shoulded into? Is it something that I don't enjoy doing, but I've never explored the option of outsourcing or getting help or, you know, maybe sharing the responsibility with somebody else? Um, is it something that you're just doing because you've always been the one to do it, or it's always been done this way and you haven't taken a step back to say, hang on, do I still need to be doing this? Because you know, at the heart of everything that I teach and work with on women is getting you back in control of your calendar again, putting you in the driver's seat of what you say yes and no to and really understanding what those boundaries need to be. Because it is very, very rare for me to meet someone where truly a full schedule equals a full, satisfied, content life. For most of us, we do need space and time on our calendar to live in the moment, to have the flexibility and the freedom to decide what to do, to have a wide open Saturday with nothing on our calendar, right? To then live in the moment and go do something that we are inspired to do. So if you are feeling pressure to, you know, quote, make every minute count or have every second of your day being captured in something that somebody else on the outside looking in might consider productive, Please know you deserve to have the control and the freedom to intentionally have large chunks of time in your life, your calendar, and your schedule that are not full in order for you to truly live a full life. Now, again, this balance of what, you know, what this is going to look like, that ratio is going to be different for everybody. And it also will change with the seasons of life as well that you are in. You may find sometimes you're in a season of life where there is more on your schedule and it is bringing you joy. And you may find there are seasons of life where there is less on your schedule and that is bringing you joy as well. But I just want to encourage you all listening here today to not measure the fullness, the abundance of your life by how full your calendar is. All right. Because that is not going to be a, a true representation. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you guys back here again next week.